elder there, and for all causes, the Presbyterian Church has been opposed to war, and we have always been, and we, and our other, and our, I'm saying it wrong, Ed, you have to edit. I am here because I oppose the war, because I do not believe that we should strike first. I think it sets a dangerous precedent, and I just don't see why we should do all this, which I feel is for oil. And I think that President Bush should heed the people and not go into this lightly, or at all. My son works for peace. He works here on, in Washington for a, a Center for Conscious uh, Objection to War. And he is, he, is an or, he is a graduate of seminary. And uh, we as a family are very much opposed to any kind of war. Each morning I, I, I have a meditation. And I got up, I was awake at 5 a.m. this morning, and I just felt that the Lord said, go, go. And I just feel that way, and I am very blessed about it. I'm Free Holler. I'm a retired Presbyterian minister in, from Greensboro, North Carolina. And I'm here because uh, I'm completely convinced that uh, the way that Jesus showed us is the way to go, and that's Loving everyone, uh, loving your enemies as best you can, trying to work things out, uh, care for one another, listen to one another, uh, be community together. That was what uh, I think he was very much about. That's what got him in trouble, but uh, that's what I'm about. Two, three. I'm Sister Maya. I'm an Episcopal nun. But I was raised a Quaker, and I don't believe war solves anything. I lived in Palestine for three years, and I've seen what oppression can do. This is no way to solve the situation. I don't think I can influence anybody by myself today. But maybe the President and the Congress and Senate will see the number of people out here and keep us from going to war, we hope. Inshallah. One, two, three. The Holy Spirit always guides us, and the Holy Spirit does not guide us into violence. It guides us to peace. That's why I'm here. Two, three. Hi, I'm Sandy McCann. I'm a senior a student at Virginia Theological Episcopal Seminary. I'm here not just because I'm a Christian, but because I'm a concerned citizen. But I suppose, really, it's because I believe that God loves everyone and that His Spirit is in each of us and that the thing that we need to do is to love each other and not kill each other and I'm totally against war as I think Jesus was. I think it's hard but I think that's the way we need to go. I love my country but I, I love people more and I love God more. Two, three. Hi, I'm Janie Brooks. I'm a senior at Virginia Theological Seminary in Alexandria, Virginia, and I'm here um, as a citizen of this country and as a Christian because I believe that the truth of God is calling us to imagine another way uh, than the violence that we're told is the only way. Um, the message of Jesus is a message of peace and love. And in the gospel, war and violence just won't preach. So I can no longer just sit around and do nothing. Um, the spirit of God and the spirit of truth has called me to, to come here and be with other people who feel the same way that I do. And I, I think it's a message for everyone, not just for Christians, but for Jewish people and Muslims and Hindus and Taoists and all of us, um, children of God and children of love. Two, three. Well, my name is Denise Mason, and I'm pastor of Community of Reconciliation Church in Oakland, uh, the Pittsburgh area. And uh, we're right in the heart of the university district. And we're a Christian congregation committed to interracial and inclusiveness and also ecumenism. And I'm here today because I couldn't be any place else. God calls us to be one people. We have to be convinced of that. And 
too often we have just been distracted by everything that uh, is going on. They're trying to create in us a spirit of fear and the the word says that God has not given us a spirit of fear but a spirit of power. I'm here because it's almost as if there is a big pink elephant in the middle of the room and no one or everyone is afraid to say so. Um, we do not have to do things this way anymore. God gave up on war a long time ago when he gave us Christ a new covenant, one that united us through love and through an understanding of our differences, celebrating the diversity of God in each of us. And the time has come for leadership to not take the easy way out. It's easy to try and force someone to do what you want them to do, to have more power than them and to tie them up or to kill them or to threaten them. But we know that the real work is done where we can sit down as brothers and sisters and work through our differences. We teach our children not to fight. We teach our children to settle differences in a peace-loving way, even with people they don't like or agree with. And yet, our government continues to model war and power and force as a way of achievement. I'm here because of the people who died in 9-11, both those who, who spent years planning the attack and, and actually had the audacity to fly the planes, as well as those people who died during the ordinariness of their day. Because I think the one testament, the one marker we could make for 9-11 is that we, for once and for all, become a people committed to reconciliation. We've asked a lot of questions about 9-11, but we haven't asked the most essential. What would make fellow human beings do something like this? And is there a way that we might listen to them without them having to get our attention this way? We know that people act out. And when they act out, they usually do odd and crazy things. And if war is not a response to that, if war is not wrong, reading wrong, then I don't know what is. And as people of faith, if we don't start having the courage of our convictions to stand up for righteousness, God's righteousness, not humanity, we'll never have a glimpse of what it is God has put us here for.